Hello everyone, my name is Guru Preet Singh and I'm a researcher at Max Planck Institute for Informatics in Saarbrück in Germany. Today, I will present our work on how we can use neural networks to design some sample correlations. This work was done in collaboration with Thomas, Tobias, Carroll and Hans Peter. The theoretical framework on which this work uh, stands was developed under the supervision of my PhD advisor, Viktor Stromakov, with the help of David Gojali. We extended this theoretical framework for important sampling and for anisotropic power spectra, thanks to uh, Wedge Jaros and Karstik Super. Now, point correlations are very important in uh, graphics. Here, I'm showing three different examples where all these distributions look visually different. That encodes there are different correlations uh, underneath them. These correlations are present all around us in nature. For example, the way the trees are distributed in nature, that depends on many factors, like the, the, the height of these trees, the diameter of, these, their of their trunk, the spread of their branches. In fabrication, these correlations are also used to design perforated lampshades that can produce projected images on the nearby walls with high fidelity while conserving the underlying grayscale intensities. These correlations are also used to design more robust structures with minimum material used. In rendering, which will be the major application of this uh, talk, it uh, has been recently shown that spatially correlated scattering particles does not obey a classical exponential degradation of uh, uh, light during transmission through the medium. Here, a Stanford dragon has been rendered with different correlations among the, spec, uh, among the scattering particles and as you may you can see the appearance of these Stanford dragons is not the same. It was also shown that some details are preserved when you use specially correlated media compared to uncorrelated media. Uh, these are highlighted here in these yellow boxes. So to give an overview, uh, in the first part of this talk we will learn how we can characterize sample correlations. And in the second part, we will see how we can design these sample correlations using neural networks. To characterize these sample correlations, we will uh, base our application on global illumination examples. So the basic illustration here is that, let's say you have an image plane and you have a scene which uh, composed of a cornet box scene and some spheres and some cubes in there. We shoot a ray from one of the pixels. It hits the geometry. And from the visible hemisphere at that hit point, we start uh, kind of generating a path of this light transport. This path can be terminated by different conditions. Here we assume that it terminates when it hits the light source. This is how the light transport works in rendering. Now, for our application here, we simplify the setup. We assume that we have a 2D lens and a 2D image plane. So, and we assume a point light source to illuminate this scene which has a defocus blur, which is uh, increasing as you go away from the screen. And here, the underlying integral is only four dimensional, which depends on the XY image plane and the UV lens aperture. By sampling this scene, we can generate this image, which has the underlying 4D integrate. Now, if you consider a pixel, which is at an in-focus plane, then this underlying pixel has a 2D function, which we call f of x. Our goal in rendering is to compute the integral of this function. Since the function is quite arbitrary, we use Monte Carlo estimation to first evaluate this function at different sample discrete locations, where these samples are generated by a given probability p of, p of x, k, and then we use this to estimate the integral using the Monte Carlo estimator. All right, now this Monte Carlo estimation is highly error prone, and this error is visible as noise in the images, so, and we call this variance. There are many ways to reduce this variance. If you use random sampling, this is highly suboptimal because there are some clusters, some voids, when you don't have enough samples. This results in a high amount of noise or variance in the images. We can improve this by inducing some correlations like stratifying the domain and then randomly jittering the samples within each of the stratum. This helps improve the quality of the image, reducing variance. We can do better. We can generate, let's say, some sophisticated 
correlations like uh, using some kind of dot string algorithm where the new sample is always placed outside the disk assigned to a given sample. The resulting distribution has a blue noise behavior uh, and uh, we call in here I'm showing an example of a Poisson disk. Another way to reduce variance is by increasing the sample count. So if you have enough resources we can keep on increasing the sample count. For random samples, the convergence rate at which this variance goes down is 1 over n, which means that if you increase the sample count by 2, the variance goes down by 2 as well. Now, with jittered samples, for this 240D case, the convergence rate uh, is derived to be n raised to the power minus 1.25, which is good. That means it converges faster. For Poisson disk, which shows uh, good quality results at a very slow sample count, a very low sample count, it uh, was observed and derived that the underlying convergence rate was 1 over n. This means that sampling patterns like Poisson disk are good when the sampling budget required is low, which is the case in most real-time applications. But for applications where the integration time is not crucial, it's better to use uh, jittered samplers. All right, now the question is how we can analyze and characterize these sample correlations. One of the statistics uh, which is well known in MCQMC literature is the star discrepancy, where the idea is that you use axis aligned boxes where each of the box is centered at their region and we compute the corresponding discrepancy. We can also compute another spatial statistics which is called the pair correlation function. The idea is that you compute the pairwise distances between the points and once you have these pairwise distances computed between uh, all pair of points, you compute a corresponding histogram of this. This histogram, in this case a 2D histogram, is uh, represented here for random jittered Poisson disk samplers. And it's called the pair correlation function. For random samples, as you can see on the left, it's a flat uh, image, which means that all kind of distances are present. For jittered, some of the region is black, but for Poisson disk, there is a well-defined dark region in the middle which says that these distances are not present in Poisson disk sampling. We can also use Fourier statistics which means that we can compute the corresponding power spectrum of these uh, sample distributions by let's say first representing these samples as a sum of Dirac's and then computing the corresponding power spectrum which is the amplitude square values of their Fourier coefficients. Here each pixel of these images, gray images shown, is the frequency. The center of these images is the DC component and as you go away from the center, you are going from low frequency to higher frequencies. Now to relate these power spectra to the variance in Monte Carlo estimation, we compute these power spectra over multiple realizations and then we average these power spectra to compute the corresponding expected power spectra. If the energy distribution is isotropic on this power spectra, then we can compute the radially average power spectrum of these sampling patterns. Once you have these expected power spectrum of these sampling patterns, we can, let's say we want to sample a function shown here f of x with these Poisson disk samples. If we can compute the corresponding power spectrum of these of these uh, fun of this function, then the corresponding variance was shown to be equal to the sum over the product of these power spectra. Now, these analyses helped derive convergence rates for many isotropic samplers, but there are many anisotropic samplers present which are used in, uh, in, in practice. For example, the Latin hypercube sampler, where the idea is quite simple. You just diagonally initialize the samples and then start shuffling along the rows or maybe along the columns as well to get the final distribution of Latin hypercube samplers. The corresponding expected power spectrum has this uh, anisotropic uh, distribution of uh, power, where these dark hair line structures are there because of this 1D stratification preserved along the X and Y projections. For the jittered sampler, we already saw that the 2D power spectrum has this dark region in the middle. Uh, Shea and colleagues in 1993 proposed this construction where they preserve both the 1D stratification and the 2D stratification at the same time. Now, given this anisotropic power spectrum, we observe that it has 
the same behavior along the canonical direction, this jitter spectrum profile, and along all other directions it has this constant profile behavior, which means that we could actually just look at these unique directions to analyze the corresponding variance convergence. To understand this better, we look at this simple function, a step function here, which has a corresponding power spectrum with all the energy in the horizontal direction. When we perform this product, since the sampling power spectrum no energy region aligns with the high energy region of the integrand spectrum, the corresponding product is low, which results in lower variance. However, if you have an integrand which has the power spectrum spread all over the place, these anisotropic structures will not help much and their variance would be higher. We plot the corresponding convergence rates for these different functions for a given Latin hypergroup sampler and observe that when these alignments happens between the power spectra of the integrand and the sampling pattern, the convergence rate shown in magenta is much better compared to when, the when there are no such alignments. And this is no surprise. In real, in real life, like in realistic scenes we have, the realistic signals we have, the integrand has arbitrary orientations and different shapes. So, for example, for this kind of uh, orientation of an integrand spectrum, if we try to sample it with a multi jitter sampling pattern, then it will not benefit from the anisotropic structures there. So we propose this uh, theoretical framework which allows to shear the samples based on the light transport uh, frequency analysis that helps improve the overall uh, uh, error in the, in, the, in, the, in the rendering. We compared convergence rate for different samplers. I'll just focus on one of them. So for example, for Sobel here in 2D for this uh, light field scene, when rendered, the sheared version shows uh, improvement in convergence compared to the, the classical version. All right, so this, I think this should have convinced you that uh, correlations are important and this also kind of gives, an, gives a uh, first overlook how we can characterize these sample correlations using Fourier statistics and spatial statistics. Let's see how we can design these sample correlations now. And for that, we will use uh, a deep convolutional neural network. Since we deal with unstructured data, we cannot use these axis aligned convolutions. So we, to, to, to perform this, uh, uh, to perform this uh, convolution, we design uh, an unstructured kernel uh, shown here as an illustration. And the idea is that you take this kernel and then you place it on top of each of the point and perform the convolution over the full domain. The complexity is n square here, but uh, uh, we would like to see how this would, uh, would, would this would help further. So as you keep increasing the, as you keep performing these convolutions, over time the points are going far. If they are too close, they will go far. If they are too far, they will start uniformly uh, filling the space. But this all depends on how they are uh, guided and that guidance comes from the loss function. So de de depending on how you define your loss function, you can then back propagate this uh, loss function value to update the weights of your convolutional kernel and these convolutions can go on and you can keep training the network till it achieves the target. To make the system more uh, general, we decided to use the loss function which would be a more abstract in the sense that it could help uh, design different correlations. So we choose a spectral loss function. Here the idea is that for this supervised learning we use uh, uh, let's say a blue noise power spectrum in this case uh, either the radially average power spectrum of that or the 2D version of that and then at each epoch we but after performing all the convolutions, we compute the corresponding power spectrum. We compute the L2 difference between the target power spectrum and the current power spectrum, and then back propagate this L2 distance to improve the overall uh, training and the quality of the, of, the, of the final output here. Here is the training process. So as you can see, the blue curve, which is the target, it matches very well uh, when we render, when we perform our training on the orange curve. So we start with random samples, which has the flat power spectrum. And after training, it matches the target spectrum, 
which in this case is a step function and in the other case it is simply this uh, more uh, the famous the oscillation version oscillated version of the blue noise spectrum uh, blue noise power spectrum all right so if you if you look at the uh, the underlying architecture it's pretty simple we have no data it's a dataless uh, training so the input is a set of random numbers so you let's say you input 1k random samples you go through the convolutions your design a loss function based on your target power spectrum then based on your loss you update the weights and the training goes on so we use more of this neural network as an optimization rather than a, a training process so once the network the kernels are trained then we can deploy these kernels to design sampling patterns for different applications to kind of proof, can proof check our implementation, we first tried to design state-of-the-art blue noise sampling patterns. So for example, here we took uh, Deco's and colleagues' uh, optimal transport as target blue noise and then showed that our, our result matches the target very closely. We also did the same for the step blue noise and stratified and the steer blue noise sampling patterns. Uh, I would like to mention that each of these papers, other than the stratified sampler here, was a SIGGRAPH paper and and has and it involves a good amount of work to generate to to get these target uh, target power spectra. But the simplicity of our approaches is, is is that that you simply have to design a target power spectrum given some constraints, and then you simply uh, your your network would give you that target spectrum. We, we tried to extend this further on higher dimensions. Uh, since we didn't have the target spectrum in higher dimensions, we could our network couldn't really give anything reasonable after eight to ten dimensions, as shown here. We also looked at other kind of loss functions. So, for example, you, we could use a pair correlation function as well, where the idea is to simply compute the pairwise distances. Since these distances are computed in a spatial domain, they makes they are more intuitively um, catchable. So, if you look at the corresponding histogram, the 2D histogram has this uh, behavior, and we can take a readily averaged uh, version of this histogram. So, using this readily averaged histogram of, or what we call the pair correlation function, we can train our network, and at each epoch, we compute these pairwise distances histogram, and then keep training the network. The resulting, um, the resulting sampling patterns matches perfectly the target for all the sampling patterns shown earlier as well. So this was just a proof of concept to just make sure that, okay, we can match the, 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 the state-of-the-art sampling patterns. We wanted to do something novel. So there was this nice application from Reinhardt and colleagues where they, sh they looked at the placement of primitives in three dimensions and, and they saw that okay if you actually preserve these blue noise properties which kind of maximize the minimum distance between the points then you can uh, if you preserve it along the 2d projections as well that gives you both 3d and 2d blue noise behavior so we wanted to do something different we said okay what if you want different Fourier power spectrum in each of the projection. So for example in XY you want a blue noise power spectrum which has this characteristic distribution in YZ you want a stratified power spectrum and in XZ you want a power spectrum with this step looking behavior. And our network does perfectly nice results, given perfectly nice results there. It matches the target very well. There are some anisotropic structures because of the interactions between different projections, but the overall behavior is well preserved. And the underlying point set is also well preserved there. Another interesting uh, aspect of this uh, work was to design novel sampling patterns depending on the class of integrants we are dealing with for integration. So for example, here we have different class of functions, the font class, environment maps, shadow maps. Uh, if we, we compute the corresponding averaged power spectrum, and since from the theory presented earlier, uh, we, we saw that for homogeneous or stationary point processes, the variance of the estimator is actually equal to the sum over the product of the sampling and integrant power spectra. We, you, we give this as input to the loss function to the neural network and try to minimize this variance as the product. 
and the resulting power spectrum gives us sampling patterns which are op well close to optimal for these class of functions. We tested this and compared the results with uh, most um, well-known sampling patterns like jittered, blue noise, optimal transport, Sobel. We also made comparisons with rank 1 lattices and Fibonacci lattices as well. And in the last, uh, we also did object placement, which we started with, like how we can place trees in the nature. So we, our network can also train for green noise distribution, which is how the trees are distributed in nature. There are many places where this work needs uh, uh, a lot of improvements. So for example, scalability is an issue right now. So we hope that it would help uh, in future, we would be able to make it scalable. How to deal with anisotropic spectra is also an important uh, concern here. For some applications, uh, it would be nice to develop uh, non-axis aligned power spectra, which can be trained and then used in rendering directly. Another aspect would be how we can use discrepancy. We published a technical report a couple of years ago where we kind of talked about that, but it didn't work out very well. And one other application would be how we can go beyond these domains, for example, on manifolds to, to, to do this training. And, and with this, I will close my talk uh, and I am thanking you for your attention. Uh, I'll be happy to take more questions if there are any.